Thank you, my friends. Loving the excitement of the hyper hyper as we build up to TFN. And uh, although I'm not one of the cool gang turning up on Thursday or even on Friday, I hope to see a lot of you out there on the Sunday if you're still around. And this week, I've got a special review for you. It is none other than the Incarnate. Oh, wait, no, that's for my other channel. Wait, no. Transformers, right? Anywho. Moving on to this week's episode of Rohan's Corner, you already know what it's about. It's part two of my assessment of the robots in Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And if you thought I was a bit harsh last week, well, pff, you're wrong. And if you thought I was quite uh, quite courteous to uh, the portrayal of some of those bots, then uh, yeah, you'd be right. Absolutely. Anywho, let's carry on with it, shall we? Next, we have Air Razor. And to say that I was skeptical about this character when she was announced, especially to be played by Michelle Yeoh, is an understatement. I have never been a fan of the Air Razor character. I find that she was forced in Beast Wars, not really had any character, didn't last very long in that series, and it felt like Hasbro were pushing another female character upon us because there weren't any. And when Air Razor came onto the scene, I found she was really the standout character in Rise of the Beasts for the Maximals for me. Playing that link role between the humans and the Maximals and the Autobots really helped develop her character. We also get to see a fair amount of screen time and dialogue from her, showing some sort of strong bond between her and Primal before she ultimately meets her demise and in her demise we see a lot of character coming out of her as she fights her way against scourges underpinnings and gives up her life as a result of that which is pretty epic it's something we should see more from the Autobots. Speaking of Primal, I felt his outing was all right. Ron Perlman does a good job. He's certainly more gruff than Gary Chalk. He's confident and he's not arrogant like Prime. He's forthright and he stands his ground, but he has empathy and compassion and that's showcased in this movie. He doesn't actually do that much. There aren't actually any really specific moments where I could say Prime did that. However, it's his general counsel that sold him as a character to me, the way in which he leads the Maximals. When they write the next Transformers live action movie, I hope they base Optimus Prime more on the Primal character set, although more than likely Primal will still be there, so who knows. Talking about stoic, selfless leaders, we have Apelink. While he's not in it for long, it was refreshing to see this character included in the show, the passing of the proverbial mantle to Primal. It's a shame he's an ape, because Hasbro missed a trick. They could have created more toys. They could have created a new distinctive character. But no, they have another beast that's very similar in shape and form to Optimus Primal. So they didn't even build a toy for him. It's a bit poor, really, from Hasbro. Uh, even though I understand there is lore around Ape Link in the history of Transformers, having another beast for this character could have ultimately created more sales. Now let's talk about the Terracons. Firstly, let's cover some more Genericons. The millions and millions of Scorpinox and Sweeps, as they apparently are known, or if you actually know them as Freezer and Novocaine. To me, they were never spoken about as Sweeps in the movie. They have no Sweepish features or characteristics to me. I had no idea that they were sweeps, and they were all totally, totally over the top in my opinion. I much prefer it when the Decepticons or the Bad Faction are few in number, but greater in strength, like in Generation 1. They are outnumbered, but they fight hard. It's no use! We're outnumbered! They 
they fight strong and they have the ability to take out the Maximals and the Autobots. Having a million of these drones does absolutely nothing for me. And to make matters worse, these Genericons are so hard to distinguish from their awful colour schemes and their small stature combined with very dark scenes, they really are poor for me. Bring back Frenzy or Ravage or even Scorponok from the first movie or Laserbeak. These were distinctive characters. We could see them. We could feel their distinguishedness in those movies. Next, we have Battle Trap. Oh, how I longed to see this character on the big screen. I have to say, I was really looking forward to seeing him because he's my favorite toy from the line and I'm probably going to pick this toy up. And I do not collect movie line toys. That's how much I like the look of his aesthetics. But boy, was I disappointed with his character. Sure, he had a fair amount of screen time, he showcased a lot of brute strength, and he even took on two or three Autobots at once multiple times. Great. I loved his alt mode, and I still see a Mask Firecracker crossover in the making there. However, man, does this guy get shafted from a dialogue perspective. I mean... There's no character building whatsoever for him. I can barely remember him ever speaking in the movie. And when you only have three main villains in your pocket and two of them do all the talking, one of them does the majority only, then it beggars belief, really. Is this movie about the Autobots versus Scourge with a couple of thrown in sidekicks? Or are they supposed to be a faction of Terracons? I know he's just a muscle. I know he's just a goon. But Koptor in GoBots does a brilliant job with the vocal element of adding humor and comedy to a goon role, which doesn't require a lot of dialogue and could easily have been added here and was missed, if I'm honest with you. Again, another character let down by a scene cut from the movie showing off a delicious fight with Optimus Prime one-on-one. -on -one. Why, oh why, did they cut it out? Second of the Terracon trio is Nightbird. There's something ever so slightly black arachnia about Nightbird, but she doesn't have the charm or the vocals to match. She does have some cheek. Again, I felt she got more time to speak than many of the other characters we've already covered. However, it's still not enough to really make her stand out. And we need more Crasher, please. Some sort of cackling, distinctive characteristic to make her stand out. Lastly, we have Scourge. And yes, is he imposing? The initial scene with Apelink helped the killing of Bumblebee also did wonders, but in the end, we would again end up with a lackey or a false leader, the likes of which we've seen in The Fallen, in Sentinel Prime, in Lockdown, who all end the same way, all have the same journey, and it's rather predictable, to be honest. We see him tortured by Unicron, but we don't get the full backstory on how he came into Unicron's servitude, which would have been far more interesting than some of the scenes that we actually got in the movie. I feel he had a decent portrayal and was well voiced by Peter Dinklage, but not as good as Lockdown nor had the impact of Sentinel Prime's defection, which was far more surprising at that time. So that's all the Transformers bots, isn't it? Well, not quite. We obviously had Unicron, the great planet eater, who we catch a glimpse of in planet mode, pulling the strings above. Honestly, I can't really remember much more about him at this stage, other than he wants the Transwarp Key MacGuffin to find the Earth and eat it. It's a bit of a shame, really. We never got to see his power like we did at the beginning of the real G1 movie in 86, where the first thing we see is Unicron munching Lithone to shreds. 
Who knows? Maybe we'll see more of Unicron in the next two films as this is the first part of a trilogy. But alas, only time will tell. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed my take on the Rise of the Beasts movie, specifically the Transformers characters and the lack of, in my opinion, screen time and dialogue that they received. What was your take? Who was your favourite character? And do you agree with my thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. For another week, I've been Rohan. Back to the studio. Transformers! Rohan's in disguise.